Welcome back to episode 10 of the Back Off Twin Cat programming series. This is part 2 of the episode. On the previous video, I have discussed about standard PLC function blocks such as bystable, triggers, timers, and counters. I have also demonstrated the online operation of each function blocks. In this video, I will proceed on the discussion on structured text programming. The following will be the outline of topics to be discussed. Structured text operators, if instruction, case instruction, and for and while loop. Structured text is one of the IEC 61131-3 programming standard. It is a text-based programming language and it is determined as a high-level programming. It consists of series of instructions such as if instruction, case instructions, and loops. It may seem like it is better to use graphical programming language like ladder diagram or function block diagram, but once you're dealing with uh, large PLC programs, it is easier to write your code clearly with structured text. Okay, so structured text programming is implemented with one or more operators, constants, variables, and functions, which are called expressions. Assignments can also be expressions, and expressions can be also composed of other expressions with operands, and this is what composes the structured text instructions. By now, I know you are familiar with constants, variables, and functions. As I have said, an expression can consist of one or more of those data and it returns a value after its evaluation. An operator is basically a symbol that dictates on how those data are evaluated, whether to perform a logical operation, a specific mathematical operation, and comparison to produce a final result or the return value of that expression. Here are the structured text operators. We could see that the expression inside the parenthesis has the strongest binding and or logic with the weakest. The evaluation of expressions is done by processing depending on the binding rules from strongest to weakest. The operator with the strongest binding is processed first, then the operator with the next strongest binding, etc. Until all operators have been processed. Operators with equal binding strength are processed from left to right. We have here uh, some mathematical operators, divide, multiply, modulo, add, and subtract. Comparison operators, such as less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, equal and not equal. And lastly, the bit logical operators such as AND, XOR, or LOGIC. Like I said earlier, these structured text operators will dictate the evaluation of your expressions. You will be using this along with constants, variables, functions, and other expressions. Here are some examples of structured text expressions. I have already prepared basic structured text program here in the action03 underscore st or a03 action and already being called in the main program. So the variables I used are also declared in the main program. So currently, I'm using my laptop or local device as my target system. This means I will be running all these codes here in my computer. Build project, log in, and start the program. Here in the first line of code, what happens is the bstart underscore conveyor boolean tag will only be true once the expression on the right side is satisfied. That is, when either bstorage underscore full or bprocessrequest is true. 
and if B door lock bit is also true. In the second line of code, I have here is an assignment of n cycle counts to be added by a constant value of 1. Once the PLC program is running, in every cycle task, this expression will be executed. That's a matter of milliseconds. I can also stop this and trigger a single cycle. Only one PLC task cycle is triggered when we see that the end cycle count is added by one. This simple and short line of code can now be used for your counter applications. Next is B valve open. The expression is tank level greater than 50 and end water temperature is less than or equal to 30 and has no faults. So if that condition is satisfied, the expression will return a value of true which will be assigned to be valve open. A valve in the process will only open when tank level is higher than 50, water temperature is less than or equal to 30, and the bit no faults is in true value. Okay, so I'll write a value for the tank level variable. I'll write a value of 65. For end water temp, 28. And set no faults to true. Now the condition is satisfied and B valve is now true. The next code is just a simple mathematical expression using the sign function with a real data type variable to be assigned onto another real variable. Now we have here is a scaling program. This is used for handling analog values. This translates raw analog values from the sensors into engineering values. For example, you have a level sensor, an ultrasonic level sensor for example, that measures 0 to 100% level of a storage tank and has an output of 4 to 20 milliamperes. So we need to scale that 4 to 20 milliampere signal into an understandable engineering value in the program, which is 0 to 100%. So this is the formula. Our raw input is the signal from the sensor, for example, and I've made some operands as constant, and that is 4 to 20 milliamperes and 0 to 100%. So here's how it works. I'll write a value of 4. The storage tank level is 0%. Prepare a value of 8 and the level is on 25%. Write value 12. The value of the level is 50. Write a value of 16. Then the level becomes 75. Then last, write a value of 20. The level is on 100%. So that is how the scaling program works. We can also make a program that has variables instead of coding constants. This is the next example I have for you. Now this is the whole formula on scaling min and max values. Our analog input is the analog signal we can describe it again as a level sensor. Raw min is minimum raw value and raw max is the maximum raw value. That can be 4 to 20 milliampere, 
uh, 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 20 milliamperes, or whatever standard signal it is. But of course, those are the uh, electrical signal, the analog I.O. module will translate that into a data readable in the program, typically a word data type with 0 to 3 to 7, 6, 7 range. Then this expression will return a value as a multiplier in this code below. The next one is that the actual value of level will be calculated with variables R engineering max as 100%. It's uh, the 100% level and engineering mean as the 0% level. Then, same results of water level as uh, we've seen from the previous code. A 4 value of analog input will result in 0, an 8 value is 25, a 12 value is 50, and 16 is 75, and uh, 20 as 100% level. Okay, so that's the program for scaling min, max, analog values. You can create this inside a function or function block. So you can just call instances when handling multiple analog inputs. And for my last example here, I have is, I have here is a uh, on delay timer or TON. I call it T mixing timer. Let's assume that, that, that this is a mixing timer. Mixing will run in a period of time given that the condition or expression is satisfied. On the previous video, I already showed you how to create instances and how to call timers in function block diagram, ladder, and structured text. This example here is how we call instance on structured text. So, timer will be activated when B run mixing is true and if storage tank level is greater than 95. With a preset time of 1 minute and 15 seconds and 100 milliseconds, I set the time. I set that time just to show you, uh, just to show you guys how, how to format a time and a timer. The elapsed time output will be assigned to T mixing act time and the Q output assigned to B mixing done. So this is how it works when I simulate it online. So uh, that was some examples of structured text expressions and also some Boolean conditions. 
I'll proceed now with the discussion on structured text, instructions, and loops. We can also make a program that has variables instead of coding constants. This is the next example I have for you. Now, this is the whole formula on scaling min and max values. Our analog input is the analog signal. We can describe it again as a level sensor. Raw min is minimum raw value and raw max is the maximum raw value. That can be 4 to 20 milliamperes, uh, 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 20 milliamperes, or whatever standard signal it is. But of course, those are the uh, electrical signal, the analog I.O. module will translate that into a data readable in the program, typically a word data type with 0 to 3 to 7, 6, 7 range. Then this expression will return a value as a multiplier in this code below. The next one is that the actual value of level will be calculated with variables R engineering max as 100%. It's uh, the 100% level and engineering mean as the 0% level. Then same results of water level as uh, we've seen from the previous code. A 4 value of analog input will result in 0, an 8 value is 25, a 12 value is 50, and 16 is 75, and uh, 20 as 100% level. Okay, so that's the program for scaling min, max, analog values. You can create this inside a function or function block. So you can just call instances when handling multiple analog inputs. And for my last example here, I have is on delay timer or TON. I call it T mixing timer. Let's assume that this is a mixing timer. Mixing will run in a period of time given that the condition or expression is satisfied. On the previous video, I already showed you how to create instances and how to call timers in function block diagram, ladder, and structured text. This example here is how we call instance on structured text. So, timer will be activated when B-run mixing is true and if storage tank level is greater than 95. With a preset time of 1 minute and 15 seconds and 100 milliseconds, I set that time just to show you how to format a time and a timer. The elapsed time output will be assigned to mixing act time and the Q output assigned to B mixing done. So this is how it works when I simulate it online.
So uh, that was some examples of structured text expressions and also some Boolean conditions. I'll proceed now with the discussion on structured text instructions and loops. Let's start with the if instructions. On using the if instruction, you just need to remember these keywords. If, then, else if, else, and underscore if. In if instructions, you can create a code that will check a condition depending on that condition. It will execute other instructions or expressions. Here's the flowchart for this basic if instruction. If condition, then instruction block, and if. Once the condition returns a true value, the instruction will be executed. If the condition is not satisfied, then the instruction will not be executed. Now, this condition compares variable A with variable B. So, if A is greater than B, instruction block A will be ex executed. And if variable A is not greater than B, then uh, simply the condition is not satisfied. It will execute instruction block B. And this last one, if condition 1 is true, then instruction block A will be executed. If condition 1 is false, then condition 2 will be evaluated. Once true, instruction block B will be executed. If condition 2 is false, then the next condition will be evaluated and uh, so on. The conditions and if instructions can be Boolean expressions, comparisons, function calls, querying of function blocks, but calling of function blocks are considered as a Boolean expression. Next we have here is the case instruction. With the case instructions, one can combine several conditioned instructions with the same condition variable in one construct. So in a case instruction, all you need to think about is one variable. Whatever the value of this variable, you can use it to execute uh, instructions. Uh, for example, an integer variable, when its value is zero, all of the process devices are on standby and upon changing the value to one, the process devices uh, starts running and upon changing it to two, uh, this is where the devices stops running and the step goes back to zero. So basically, you can uh, have a sequential process control using case instruction. Here's a flowchart for us to further understand uh, how case instruction works. The keywords or syntax for case instruction is case, the variable, of, the value of that variable, and end underscore case. In this example, the selection criterion represents the variable. It represents the variable and each of the variables will execute three instructions. When the value of the selection criterion is equal to one, instruction one will be executed. When the value of the selection criterion is equal to two, four, or six, instruction two will be executed. And seven, 10, instruction three will be executed. And if none of those values equals to the selection criteria, and else can be used to execute default instructions. In this next example, uh, this case is applicable on possibly step sequences and machine states. Here we got the variable state and each of the values represents the state using the tags q0, q1, q2, and q3. And in each of the states, there is an if instructions wherein if the transition variable becomes true, it will then move to the next step. Okay, now let's move on with loops. Loops in programming are a set of instructions that are being repeated. It allows your program or codes to be executed on repeat. I'll start with for loop. 
The syntax for for loop is this, for, to, do, and end for. A variable should be declared and specify its starting value to its end. The incremented or decremented value will be repeated in every PLC cycle task, along with the instructions inside the for loop. Here's a sample for loop code. We could see here that I have n index as an integer variable. n data is an array of integer 1 to 10. That means variable n data has 10 integer elements. What happens here is that n index will be repeated repeatedly incremented from 1 to 10 and it will execute this code below which is n data as index to manipulate the element of n data then every value of n index will be multiplied by 2 and will be assigned to the corresponding n data index Okay, so that's one example of the for loop. Next is while loop. So while loop is also a repeat statement and is similar to for loop. The difference of while loop with for loop is it evaluates a Boolean condition. A while loop will repeat all instructions as long as the evaluated Boolean expression is true. Here's the syntax of a while loop. While, do, and ends with and while. Here's one example. While our variable 10 is not equal to 0, it will just repeat the instruction to our variable 10 minus 0 0.01. So that code right there, uh, once that Boolean expression is uh, being satisfied, that instruction will continuously be executed and uh, when it becomes zero the while instruction will finally end okay so that was all for today i hope you've learned how to program plc's using structured text language i have given you the basic ways or we can say starting point for structured text programming uh, there are so many approaches to take in consideration when doing the code you desire. Just make sure you completely understand the logic of the program you need to create and of course keep on practicing. You can download the TwinCat 3 from the back of website and install it in your laptop in order for you to test your program. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below. That's it for this video. If you want to learn more about Contratech's marker automation, you can visit our website at www.contratech.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social media accounts. See you in the next video!